Hey guys, Slash West here, welcome back to the beat -em -on Archive. Today, let's check out Super beat -em -on 102 Master Koryakuo Special 2. So, you guys might be thinking, Master Koryakuo Special 2, what about Special 1? Well, the fact of the matter is, I don't have Special 1 at the moment, so I will be returning to review that beat -em on in the future when I obtain him and some other OS system super beat -em on that I'm currently missing. That said, we're forging right ahead with Master Koryakuo Special 2. That said, Master Koryakuo Special 2 does not exactly roll off the tongue, so for the remainder of this review, I'm going to be referring to this guy as just SP2 or Special 2, something like that. Now, I have some bad news and some good news. The bad news is, this guy was obtained secondhand without his box and without his back hatch. But, the good news is, the Fighting Phoenix back hatch actually fits this guy perfectly. And even more good news is, thanks to the internet, I actually have pictures of all the other sides of this guy's box. On the front side, we've got Special 2 himself, of course, his user, product number, name, and dimensions. Above, the Super beat -em on and Overshell system logos. On the side, his barrel, quick loading gimmick, and articulated wings. On the back, his parts are named as the Arrow Wing, Arrow Barrel, Quick Loading 2, the first belonging to the Green Bomberman, and Power Shoulders. No, not those Power Shoulders. Remember, kids. Beat em on are dangerous. On the other side, we've got Special 2 by himself, then with his arrow barrel, and all geared up with OS gear, a magazine, and the star long barrel. Now, as some of you guys may have noticed already, this guy's red, white, and yellow color scheme is really tacky. Like, big time tacky. This guy looks like some kind of Happy Meal toy from the 90s. If Ronald McDonald was in the Super beat -em on anime, this would be his beat -em on Now, onto his parts. You can see that he's got this trigger that is a bit extended and much widened on the back. I'm not sure if he came with a normal trigger because, again, <laughs> Second hand, but oh well, we don't need it anyways, right? So it's widened and you can see it's curved here so that it conforms to the shape of your thumb for nice controlled firing. It is nice to fire with. That said, it has this kind of hook on the bottom here and while it is good for balance for when you've got magazines attached, it is not so healthy for my foam setup. It really likes cutting into it. So... I am just going to put it on upside down for the remainder of this review so that I don't have to replace the base of the setup by the time it's done. Let's just forego the arrow barrel for now to take a look at one of his main features. Other than the trigger, we have the quick loading gimmick. If you're familiar with loading dials or gill scorpion, then this is an ability that should be familiar to you, where basically, there's a bidama on the ground, you can press this guy down to load it into the chamber. Now as you can see, we've got some little bits on either side that compress, kind of like hold parts when you press the bidama in. And we also have this latch. Now this latch, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but it's shaped like a bit of a hook on the inside. And when it's pressed against the inner walls of the chamber by the bidama passing through, it compresses the lever bit so that it springs back you see it compresses, so it springs back down under the bidama. So that way, the bidama will remain properly loaded in the chamber. Now that said, you do need to put down a bit of force, of course, to load these into the chamber, but when you do that, as you can see, 
it just launches the bidama straight out the back and clearly that's problematic. So to fix that problem you will need to attach a magazine and since this is an OS system super beat em on you're gonna need OS gear to do that. We'll do that later down the line because we attach OS gear for more than one reason with this guy. Without the arrow barrel this guy's power really is quite lackluster usually under two meters per second. Now that said when you fire this guy, you can see that not only do the hold parts spread, but so do the arms. And that's because, like other OS system super beat em on, like Fighting Phoenix and Wild Wyvern, these yellow pegs that stick out from the inside are actually on the same part as the hold parts. So when the hold parts spread, so do they, and therefore the arms. But what that also means is that you can actually compress these shoulders to also compress the hold parts. And if you're familiar with the emblem charge system gimmick, it's basically just like that. So if I compress them, you can see that I actually can exceed three meters per second just by doing that. Now part of why that's so interesting is when you attach the arrow barrel, it actually hooks onto these shoulders. So it hooks onto those and also provides some tight friction on his, uh... <laughs> it attaches to his shoulders though, and what that means is it automatically provides resistance on them without you having to. So once you attach the barrel, it's basically a power buckle for this guy. Now, on top of basically being a power buckle, of course, the arrow barrel is a barrel. <laughs> it is quite narrow, so you do get some fairly decent accuracy with it. And, as you can see, we've got these arrow wings sticking out from it, so when you're trying to aim at targets, they make a bit of a nice sight for aiming at it, even though this angle <laughs> isn't really the best for it but they do definitely help. But they don't just aim at targets, you've probably seen in pictures, that they actually fold back like this. And basically the reason for that is that they're an alternative grip for you. Which is quite comfortable and is also actually really good for your power. Since you don't need to press onto the shoulders for power with this barrel attached, you can provide some back force into the trigger as well for a bit of a power boost. Well, reading's lower there, but you catch my drift. <laughs> the other interesting thing about the arrow barrel is the whole point of the OS system is that these beat -em on typically can't attach to barrels or magazines without OS gear. So it is really interesting and unique that this barrel does not need OS gear to attach to this guy. That said, SP2 is the only OS system super beat em on that this barrel can attach to without OS gear. Now, also without OS gear, this barrel does wiggle and wobble a little bit. It's really not a big deal, but that can add a bit of error and misdirect shots a bit. So, when you do attach OS gear, and to do that, you will need to remove your trigger because, of course, this pad is way too wide to fit through this slot. We're, of course, just going to fold the shoulders down. And you can see that the holes go onto those holes right there. And this bottom hole fits like so. And there we go. We've got some OS gear. And let's just put the trigger back on. And now, because of those extra one to three points of contact, this barrel is now totally solid. There is no wiggle going on here at all. Plus, it just further solidifies the built-in kind of power buckle effect going on here. But the biggest help from all of this is the fact that now we can actually use a magazine with this guy. If you remember that problem that we were facing before, where, you know, Bidama were just launching right out the top, yeah, that is not a problem for us anymore. <laughs> so yeah, 
you're definitely want to get uh, gonna want to get some OS gear for this guy if you can. I think there's actually red OS gear out there somewhere to match this guy. Either that, or if you're really, uh, or if you're really creative, like rec. <laughs> Or if you're really creative, like Beta Blader 95, you can just mod some and paint it red for yourself. But yeah, you'll definitely, definitely want to attach some OS gear to solidify this barrel and fix the problems with this guy's gimmick, because without this magazine, that bottom loading is basically totally useless. Now before we give this guy a test run, I just want to point out quickly that you might have noticed at the end of the last shot, this guy's lever actually fell out. And that is something that you're going to want to watch out for. I'm not 100% sure how common that is for these guys because I did take this guy entirely apart just to see how everything went together and I broke a couple of the pegs that hold the halves of the red frame together. So that might have loosened things up to allow the feet to lower to allow the latch to fall out, but I'm not sure if that's still a problem with uh, unbroken versions of this guy. Now that said, let's give this guy a bit of a test run really quick here. So, so you do need to give a little bit of force at least to load this guy properly, and let's go. What am I doing? And see, you can see <laughs> the lever fell out there too, so isn't that great, eh? Well, still got one pin left, right? <laughs> see, there's one thing that I really love about doing reviews, and it's when you test a beat em on a bunch, and then you start filming, and then it acts super wonky. So this is definitely something that you're gonna wanna watch out for, is this lever falling out like crazy. Now that said, the loaders still do work, as in these two side loaders, but the thing is, this lever was intended, of course, to keep the bidama loaded properly in the chamber. Without it, it drops a bit, but, if you press the trigger enough, it actually does lift the bidama. Now that's not entirely healthy because it's basically forcing the bidama against the frontal frame to pick it up like that. Plus, because of that extra friction, you're not gaining extra power, it's basically just slowing you right down. But at least, but at least we have the bright side that it can still work without that lever. <laughs> but I still highly recommend getting a magazine for this guy if you want to use that quick loading. Now as a quick side note, this arrow barrel can actually attach to Koenig Cerberus if you take his power ring off, which of course you are going to have to take his arms off for first, because as you can see he does have these little holes on his extended shoulders. So just like SP2, They'll just hook right on like that. But you will need to keep the third bloody claw at the bottom so that it'll actually fit on the inside like that. Now the problem is there's a couple of downsides. One, this is much more wobbly than on SP2. Two, you can't rotate the bloody claws while this is attached. This bottom one barely fits into this divot here. So that's a no-go. And Worst of all, you cannot fire it with this barrel attached. And that's simply because these bloody claws just have way too much friction with the inner parts of the arrow barrel. So while it is cool that it can attach to Koenig Cerberus also without OS gear, it's not going to work. Now, one other unfortunate case is that this barrel cannot attach to Stag Sphinx, but Stag Sphinx doesn't work with any barrels. And, but Stag Sphinx can't attach to any barrels, so that's not much of a surprise. Now on the bright side, you can attach this barrel to the other OS system, Super Beatemon, but you will need OS gear to do that. So, on Fighting Phoenix here, I'm just going to clip it on like such. Huh.
Hmm. Need a quick cut because that is a bit of a pain and a bit weird to fit on, but it can fit and attach to other OS systems Super Beat'em on and still fire properly. But as you can see, it's still a bit of a loose connection. <laughs> it's a bit sketchy, so really, this barrel is definitely mostly meant for SP2. You're definitely getting the most value out of it anyways because it's going to boost this guy's power as well as his accuracy. It will also fit on Junker Unicorn or Wild Wyvern. Again, just not as well, apparently. And just one more thing to note is that when this barrel is attached to these guys and it hooks on, when you try to spread the wings back, they'll actually run into these Beatamon's arms. As you can see, SP2's arms are lowered at a bit more of an angle to actually allow that lever to fit into that gap. Whereas that is not the case for any of these guys. So even if you wanted to use this grip, because that's basically all that you're gaining on top of a barrel with these guys, you're not going to be able to use it. So again, really, you're only going to get the most value out of this barrel when it's attached to SP2. All in all, Master Kodiakuo Special 2 does have a lot of features, from his extended and widened trigger, which provides a bit of balance with this foam-destroying hook at the bottom, to of course his quick-loading gimmick, and his arrow barrel, which provides a bit of a power and accuracy bonus, and also a bit of a nice grip that's optional. Or you can choose to have some nice aimers as well. That said, again, this trigger really likes eating up my setup, <laughs> and less personally, this quick loading gimmick likes to fall apart, and this barrel really doesn't work very well with any of the other OS systems Super Beat'em on. Now, this guy, like all the other OS systems Super Beat'em on, really isn't that cheap. He costs around $30 US, I'd say, on average. And even if you got a cheaper deal, I really wouldn't recommend him. If you're really interested in the quick load, uh, in the quick loading gimmick, if you're really interested in the quick loading gimmick, I much, much more highly recommend a loading dials or a gill scorpion. These guys are way more reliable quick loaders. Plus, of course they don't... <laughs> they don't fall apart while you're trying to use them. Plus, they're both cheaper than this guy. <laughs> that said, this is Slash West, and I'll see you next time on the Beat'em On Archive.